So this video is going to be more about a specific argument made by both a lot of xenogender and self-diagnosers, but this video is going to be focusing on xenogenders. When you provide scientific sources for your side and then ask that they do the same, and they say, well, gender isn't science. Gender is a social construct. Despite the fact that you were able to provide scientific sources to back up your claim, which shows there is at least an aspect of it that is scientific. Personally, I really do not care about anecdotes the second that a scientific paper is introduced. <gasps> if neither side had any science, it would be one thing. I wouldn't, I, I, I wouldn't take it for a fact. I would take it with a grain of salt. An anecdote is an anecdote. It's someone's experience or perspective. But, you know, I wouldn't have anything better. So I would take that for what it is. But whenever I or someone else introduces a scientific paper, the standard of evidence has been raised. A peer-reviewed study, especially one with lots of other similar studies that come to similar or identical conclusions, is kind of the golden standard of evidence. You can argue gender isn't science and it's a social construct, but the thing is you're going in circles. It's circular reasoning to say, I don't need scientific sources because gender is a social construct because you already believe gender is a social construct. I provide scientific sources that say, hey, gender roles and the binary is a social construct, but gender is innate to human biology. And again, you get, I don't need scientific sources because it's not a scientific topic, which has just been disproven by the presence of plethora, uh, plethora of scientific studies. Now, they can still make the argument that gender isn't scientific, but the thing is they need to disprove my source and their personal experience does not disprove anything other than that they agree with me. There are plenty of scientific studies debunking old theories, things like the ether. There are studies on that being debunked. Yes, the ether is not a scientific concept because it doesn't exist, but we had to do science to prove that it doesn't exist. So now that I and other people have introduced a higher standard of evidence, that being scientific journals, you need an equally credible source saying your source is wrong preferably something newer or close in age with mine, because you can't disprove a negative. If, if brain sexual dimorphism had not been proven in the first place, you couldn't disprove it. So I wouldn't, it needs to be at least up to date with mine to disprove something because it wouldn't have been proven before that. Now, like I said in my other video, um, these people do not understand sourcing. And if you want to understand how to properly find and verify a source, uh, you can go watch that video. But this video is going to be more a second part sort of talking about why it's important to source, not just how to do it. So as I went over in the beginning, once a scientific paper has been introduced, an anecdote is no longer sufficient. Personally, I think the only time an anecdote is really sufficient for anything is when you're talking to a therapist or a friend or just talking about your emotions, not talking about something that your anecdote can be disproven with science. For example, with religion, there are plenty of various religions with anecdotes of seeing or hearing or speaking to God, but that's not enough because first of all, from what we know, that's not scientifically possible. And second of all, that could very well just be your own perspective. Not all of those religions can be true at the same time. So clearly there is some discrepancy there with that anecdote. An anecdote is not a trustworthy source. It's something that's interesting and is good to learn about, but it's not, it's something you need to take with a grain of salt and not use as an objective fact. The next thing that's a problem is lack of professionalism. Whenever I am provided with sources, like I said in the other video, they're usually wiki links, they're cards, they're social media posts, they're not scientific journals, they're not even articles and newspapers, which are still below scientific journals, but are a hell of a lot more credible depending on where you get them from. It's things made by people in their echo chamber, people who agree with them, with usually no sourcing. Like I showed on that really common Xenogender card, the only clickable links go to people's Twitter for people who coin gender terms. And the thing is, yes, someone can say, oh, I'm a doctor or I'm a psychiatrist or I'm a whatever. First of all, if it is not a scientific paper, you cannot verify that that person is either impersonating the name that they're using or that they're just fucking making it up. A scientific study has to have the credentials of that per person, has to go through a publishing process, and then has to be peer-reviewed. So you can't really impersonate someone while writing a scientific study. But it's extremely easy to look up the name of a neurologist and slap it on your card. 
Now, I've never seen anyone do that, but first of all, it's an argument from authority to say, well, this person's a doctor and they said so. There are plenty of bad doctors. There are plenty of bad researchers. There's plenty of bad professionals. And that's an argument from an authority. It is a fallacy. And that's why I don't just take articles written by doctors or trans people or whatever at face value. I need a study to go with it. Because the study is showing objective research that this person is correct. I mean, like, I could, I'm an artist. I do art kind of as my job right now. Uh, I could say, yeah, a circle is a square. That doesn't make it true just because I'm an artist. It would mean I'm stupid or biased. It wouldn't mean, well, he's been to art school a bit, so he must be right. I mean, that's a pretty straightforward example, but argument from authority is not a good position to take anyway. Um, but again, you also can't even verify that the person writing the card or the wiki is who they say they are. Not to mention the often inaccurate representation on these of what's actually being said whenever they do source things. Like, for example, I said in my original Xenogender video, right? Someone sent me a link to the World Health Organization where the first line describes gender as a social construct, but clearly did not read the actual article because it actually has nothing to do with being trans, nothing to do with gender as a whole, as like a concept. It's talking about discrimination and sexism against women and the wage gap. It just describes it that way because it later goes on to talk about gender roles. And again, this would still be an argument from authority because this was not a study. It was an article teaching people about feminism, which is good and all. It has its place and it's a good source, but it's not the kind of source that you need for this. And not to mention the content of it was actually not relevant to the conversation because they didn't read the whole thing. Now, had they sent me a study that was written by someone who worked for the World Health Organization that was a peer-reviewed study that disproved trans brains and maybe also talked about discrimination against women, that would be different. And I would take that for what it is. And I would say, hey, I'm going to research these people and the journal it's published in. And I'm going to, if you're right, I'm going to concede. I'm going to say, okay, I was wrong. But that's not what it was. That is the only thing close to a credible link I've ever been sent by a Xenogender user. And it was a misplaced one. Uh, it's a credible but misplaced source. It's the only one I've ever been sent. And it's a problem whenever you have a much higher standard of evidence than the people who are trying to slander you. It all really comes back to this, gender isn't scientific, so I don't need a scientific source. But again, the second a scientific study is introduced and it's a credible and relevant study, it becomes an issue that needs to be disproven with science as well. If you want to argue that gender is not scientific in any way, shape, or form, and it's all a social construct. You can do so if you find a scientific study that is well accepted, written by credible researchers, etc. If you do that, you can find a scientific study, if it exists, saying, hey, the brain, the, the brain, gendered brain model doesn't work. We were wrong. If that exists, send me that. Because that would still prove that gender has nothing to do with science and is a social construct entirely. And it would be a credible source that was a scientific study. But the thing is, I've done my own research, haven't found anything. I've never been sent anything like that because their standard of evidence is so low. And it's really frustrating because you try and have a civil conversation and say, hey, look, I got these sources and they won't read them. They won't skim them. They, and I, I try my best to only link open, open studies. I try to not link closed studies. I believe I have one closed study that I can access with my school email on um, on my sources list. It may have changed. I think it was briefly open, but it may have just been that I was logged in on something I didn't think I was logged in on. But anyway, I try my best to provide open source studies. Um, and I could understand if I sent a closed source study and I said, hey, look at this. And they were like, I can't read that. And I'm not paying $50 to read it. I'd be like, yeah, that's fair. I don't expect you to pay $50 to read a scientific journal that I sent you. That's unreasonable, which is why I try and find open source studies. However, they don't provide any studies. And I think this also contributes not just to their belief in something that's not true or the frustration of people who put time and effort into learning about this instead of just spewing inclusion inclusionist crap, but it also can create that mindset in other areas that my anecdote is good enough. My anecdote is all I need. I need, I feel this way, and that's all that matters. And that's the kind of mindset that conspiracy theorists have. That's the kind of mindset that most people have. That's the kind of mindset that self-diagnosers have. It's people, it creates this just mindset of, I don't need proof. I don't need it. 
because I'm going to go in circular reasoning and say, it's true because I experienced it. And because I experienced it, it's true. It just goes in a cycle. There's also just the aspect, this is less about sourcing and more just something that irks me. And also as a parallel to religion is shutting down conversation. Listen, if you don't want to have a conversation about xenogenders, whether you identify as them or support them or neither or whatever, that's fine. You're entitled to not have that conversation. And I'm not going to come up to some random person who says they're cat gender and go, you're not real, right? It's not my place to do that. But if you come on my page and proceed to comment, I'm going to expect a substantial argument. And the goal a lot of the time is not to provide substance for their belief, but it's to shut down conversations with generally using buzzwords saying, you're transphobic, your beliefs are harmful, that's my whole comment. Look at this very poor source, if you can even call it that, that I have. I'm right because a teenager made a card. Or some kind of snarky thing like, I guess I'm not real then because I'm cat gender, which is just a non-argument. It's like, no, you're real. You're just wrong. <laughs> and the whole, you're a terrible person because you disagree with me. That's the end of the conversation. You're not allowed to speak anymore. That shuts down conversation. And I think it kind of implicates the same thing as religious people going, respect my religion instead of defending it whenever they still feel the need to comment. Because it's saying, you can't criticize me or you're being discriminatory. Criticism is not discriminatory. If I were to go up to a xenogender person and say, I hate you, die, that would be shitty. It wouldn't be discriminatory because you're not a minority, but it would be bullying. It wouldn't be a nice thing for me to do, and it wouldn't be productive. But me making a video going, hey guys, I'm going to read you a snippet of two scientific articles. I'm going to explain why these are relevant, and I'm going to state my case and then explain why the other side causes harm. That's not discrimination. That's not transphobia. That's not if you want to hijack the word xenophobia to mean I won't call you cat self instead of actual like deportation and shit, then sure, it's not xenophobia. It is me making a case that you disagree with that happens to have more substantial arguments than yours and you want to shut it down before more people realize that you don't have substance. Not to mention if you want to change someone's mind, just calling them an insult or an ism or something is not going to change their mind. Sure, it might scare some people into being quiet. I'm not one of them. But it's not going to change anyone's mind. All it's going to make them do is shut up for some people. And to some people, that's good enough. They don't care if you change your mind. They just care that no one's disagreeing with them openly. But a lot of people do think that you need to change your mind and then proceed to not put any effort into that. You can't expect people to change their mind just because you insult them. You can't say, you're transphobic and I'm going to cancel you. Sure, maybe some people will shut up about it, but I'm not going to shut up about it. I'm not going to change my mind because you insult me. That's not a good argument. And it shows how weak your position is that instead of providing a long thought out comment with sources and descriptions on what you mean, and sure, if you want an anecdote, throw it in there as long as you've got sources. That's what would change my mind is predominantly the sources and civility. Your transphobic is not going to change my mind. I don't even think these people are trans. That means nothing to me. You're saying I'm being transphobic to cis people. So that's all I really got. If you want to change someone's mind about their beliefs, shutting down conversation is not the way to do it. Getting defensive is not the way to do it. And refusing to research your own position is certainly not the way to do it. The only way to change someone's mind and the only way to change most trans meds minds is with sources. And there's a reason that... It's not working, and it's because you haven't provided any. Thanks for watching, guys. How to bra. I stare at the populace in prayer.